Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for Precision Digital's Solutions Guide Overview for Distributors. Uh, once again, this is a webinar specifically for our distributors, and everybody in the audience here today uh, is an outside salesperson, a sales manager, or some other uh, customer interacting sales role with our distribution network. And so this webinar is going to specifically focus on how you can use our new solutions guide to increase your precision digital sales, make you more money, and really help you be that solutions provider that we all want to be. I have a couple of record keeping items before we get started here today. Uh, first off, let me let you all know that you are in listen only mode, as you have probably noticed. That means that uh, you cannot talk back live into the web conference. However, you do have a chat window where you can send me messages, and at the end of the webinar we'll be going over some questions you may have. Uh, if we don't get to your questions, we'll certainly follow up with you after the webinar. And so please feel free to send us some messages during the course of the webinar. I'd love to have people live and have some live Q&A, but with so many people on the line today, it's just going to be very difficult to do. The number one question that we get is, will this webinar be recorded? And the answer to that is yes, this webinar will absolutely be recorded. Uh, you will get an email mid-next week, which will have a recording of this webinar, as well as the slides that we're going to see here today in it for you to download. Uh, the last bookkeeping item I have here today is that there is a survey at the end of the webinar. And I would greatly appreciate it if you would go ahead and take a moment to fill that survey out when we are done so that we can find out what you thought of the webinar here today, as well as perhaps get some new ideas from you on what you'd like to see for future Precision Digital webinars. That having been said, I should also address this giveaway that we have here on the front page. And that is our PD9502 signal generator giveaway. And the deal we have for these PD9502 signal generators, which is a small handheld 4 to 20 milliamp generator that Precision Digital offers, is that anyone who requests 25 solutions guides to be shipped to their home address will get a free PD9502 signal generator with them. Now we want to send them to your home address because the majority of you out there are outside salespeople, and we want to make sure that these get to you. Uh, one of the questions I'm going to have for you in a moment is, did you get our solutions guide? And you'd be surprised how many times we ship these to office locations and they just don't get there. So that's our motivation behind that. If you want to sign up for that, you can do it right now at predig.com forward slash guide. You can type it into the chat window that you'd like to sign up for that and give me your address there, or you can email me after the webinar. So let me introduce myself. My name is Joe Ryan. I am the VP of Sales and Marketing at Precision Digital. And I have this quote up here from myself because I want to make it very clear that I am open to talking with you about anything that comes up today. So please feel free to call me after the webinar to discuss any particular applications you, that we breeze through here today that you want to learn more about or get into the details of. If you see information that you like and you want to learn more about, like let's say Open Channel Flow comes up and you say, hey, I didn't know Precision Digital could help me with that. I'd like to chat with someone. Please reach out. I've got my phone number and my email here so that you can reach out directly to me and we'll get you any help, any help and assistance that you need. I did mention I had a few questions for you. This will help me guide the rest of the webinar. The first one is, did you receive your solutions guide in the mail? Everyone here should have had a solutions guide mailed to them. However, thanks to problems in, in routing around offices or issues with old addresses, sometimes they just don't quite get to where they're going. And so if you'd go ahead and let us know if you remember getting your solutions guide, that would certainly help us know. And if you say no, then we're going to be happy to reach out to you and try to figure out why and make sure you do get one of these. I've got the responses still coming in, so I'll give you 10 more seconds here just to give me an answer. And it looks like the majority of you did get your solutions guide, but there are some of you that did not. So thank you for letting me know that, and we'll look to remedy that very soon. For those of you who did get your solutions guide, uh, do you have it in front of you? My hope is that you do so that we can make some page references and you can flip through it during the course of the webinar and really take a look at what we're going to be talking about here today. And it looks like uh, 
more than half of you do have that solutions guide in front of you. So I appreciate that. So I may make a couple of page references to help you folks out, but I won't make this presentation too dependent on having the physical copy of the guide there with you today. So what are the takeaways from today's presentation? Well, we are doing this so that you can make the most out of the solutions guide. What does it mean to be making the most out of the solutions guide? Well, it means that you're going to have the greatest opportunity to boost your sales using this guide. This is, after all, a selling tool. This is something for you to use to boost your precision digital sales and to provide the complete solution. When you're out there talking about the transmitters, you talk about every day. So we're going to show you how best to do that efficiently, quickly, and in a way that really gets your customer's attention. We'll also have an opportunity to talk about a couple of our application photos and describe what's going on there. And we've, of course, got our special offer to outside salespeople, our PD9502 offer, to help motivate you to put these solution guides in front of your customers. Although hopefully by the end of the presentation, you see the advantage of this being so great that you're happy to sign up even if we didn't offer that 9502. So let's start by looking at the cover of this document. You'd be amazed how much work goes into trying to figure out exactly how to phrase these things. Uh, for example, the first thing you're going to notice about the solutions guide is the solutions guide itself is actually very, very tiny. We're not calling it a catalog. It doesn't have a giant year on the top of it because that's not really what's going to get your customer's attention. What we want you to pay attention to and what we want your customer to pay attention to on this cover is this statement right here. My 4 to 20 milliamp transmitters and these meters provide the complete solution. That is a quote that you can read right off of the cover to open up the conversation about selling more than just your single transmitter. You have your transmitter conversation. I understand that's the key critical point of your call. But at the end of that discussion, once you've sold them on the idea of using your transmitters, you take out your solutions guide, hold it out to them, and you literally say, my 4 to 20 million of transmitters and these meters provide the complete solution. I like the fact that we state that it can provides the complete solution, not just uh, offers you more convenience or something like that. Because every one of you out there, I'm sure, when someone asks what you do, you don't say, well, I'm an order taker. Well, I bring donuts to my buddies. No, you say, I'm a solutions provider. I provide the complete process solution. And that's what we're trying to help you do here. We're giving you a tool to get that conversation going so you can provide them all the elements of their solution. Now, that might be because we're a power supply for the system. Maybe they need some relays for control and alarm, even if it's just redundant local control. Maybe they just want a local display located somewhere they can actually see so they don't have to climb tanks or uh, straddle over pipes or lift accesses to sumps. Maybe they need something that can go into their hazardous areas so their operators can see what's happening. The point here is that we are trying to give you the words you can say to get the complete solution conversation started. You also notice that we left the spot down the bottom for my contact information. In this case, my refers to you. So we want you to put your sticker on this. The bottom of the solutions guide was left pretty plain that you can put whatever size sticker you'd like on the bottom of this document. So when they pick it up, they see that you're offering the complete solution, and they've got your contact information right on the cover. Now, if there are some of you out there who don't have stickers for yourself, let us know. We'll be happy to ship these solutions guides out and make you up some labels you can stick on the front of it. So the big takeaway for the cover, most important page of the document, is my 4 to 20 million transmitters and these meters provide the complete solution. If that's your only takeaway today, is that I should take this document, hold it out, and say that phrase when I'm done with transmitter sales, that's 50% of the battle. One of the reasons that that can work so well is because even if you don't get into the contents, there is a poster shoved inside every one of these solutions guides. So if you were to hand someone a solutions guide and literally not say another thing about it, this poster is going to practically jump out at your customer, and then all you've got to do is pick it up and hold it, hold it up for them. And, and that's what you see here. This is our actual size poster showing the ProView, the Protex Max, and the Helios all of which have all the features found in our ProView series of meters, which I'm sure all of you are somewhat familiar with, but also showing them the actual size display for our hazardous area version, the big blue one, and our large display Helios, 
but it's one point in each digits. So now it's not a matter of what kind of or now it's not a matter of do they want to the display. It's a question of what kind of display do they want. And if they're interested in loop powered or enunciators or a new light and horn or wireless units, well the back of the poster shows all of those as well. It works extremely well. Uh, in fact, here we have a picture of Owen Peters, one of our outside sales folks, uh, in this photo down in Mexico, standing up on top of the rig, showing the poster, making the point that you can see that Helios from 100 feet away. And if you can see it on the poster, you can absolutely see it in real life when it's actually lit up. Holding up that one side of the poster shows your customer $4,000 worth of product. It's the easiest three product demo you're ever going to give. And because it's actual size, it really drives the point home about why they want these displays. Now, hopefully, that's going to get the conversation going, and you're going to like the looks of it. And you're going to dive a little bit deeper into the solutions guide with your customer. On the inside cover, so this would be on page two, where we've also got our table of contents, we have some text there that you may or may not read. I'm sorry, that's a table of contents. Uh, we have some text there that you may or may not read, but it at least gives you an idea of what you should be talking about. So you can practice this by just saying this to your customer as you begin this conversation with the solutions guide. With precision digital meters and the various transmitters I sell, whatever your brands have to be, I can provide you with a complete solution to a wide variety of measuring, displaying, controlling applications. And here's a great line to get this conversation started about why they would want to attach a meter to this sale. Regardless of the transmitter we settle on, most, if not all, are going to need 24 volts to power them. That power can be provided by the precision digital meter. That feature simplifies wiring and saves you the cost of an external power supply. So there, you're positioning this not just as a display. You're saying, look, you're going to need a power supply regardless. You've got to somehow get 24 volts in there. You'd like it to be an isolated supply. Well, rather than selling you just an isolated supply and finding a way to get that out there, I'm going to sell you this display that not only adds all the convenience of a display, but it's the power supply we're going to have to add anyway. So there may be plenty of other reasons why they want a display, but this is one that you're going to need on just about every transmitter application you sell. So why not use that to start your discussions around why they're interested in getting a display and adding it into this system? Then starting on page three, we've got our What's New page, where we show our Helios with light and horn and our NEMA 4X enclosures with light and horn. In this case, we've got the Helios with the three-color light on the top. And we've got our Trident X2 meter with the single red color light. And what I'm going to do here today is a bit of an illustration as to how you should go through this guide. That's the limit of what I'm going to do here as far as talking about the Helios and the Trident X2. I showed it to you, and now we're moving on to the next topic. Because when we say we want you to show this guide to your customers, we're not asking you for a 30-minute presentation. I understand that's just not going to be possible in most situations. If you get that, it's going to be as a result of this initial discussion. So what we want you to do is just quickly go through this page by page, draw their attention to the various areas of discussion, and look for their response. See how they react to the things that you bring up. So for example, on the bottom of page three, we have these cool new 4 to 20 million tools for your bench and toolbox. Those include a 4 to 20 million panel mount set point generator, which is great for valve control. It's a nice low cost item for manual 4 to 20 output generation. We've got a 9501 full featured multi multifunction calibrator. And then the, it's a little brother, the PD9502 low cost 4 to 20 million signal generator. If you want that to be fully portable and not need to be plugged in, we've got our PDA1001 USB power bank. And I'm done. I'm moving on. If those products were of interest to them, then I would have seen their response, and I'm, I'm happy to continue talking about them. But we have a fair amount to go through, and so we don't want to spend too much time on any one thing. If you want to spend that time on something that's absolutely great, but I suggest you flip on to the next page. If you don't see a response, if you don't get a conversation started, then you start on the next page. Now, if you were to look at the top of page four, you're going to see uh, small blue callouts that look like a text box from a comic book, like what someone would say, a little speech bubble. And in those, you're going to have questions, like the three that we have up here, 
that you can ask your customer to find out if the things on that page are of interest to them. So I could review all of page four by simply asking, do you want to stop climbing tanks to get level measurements? See if they have any interest in local displays next to the tanks. How are you planning on powering the transmitter we talked about? Do they have power out there or do they need power? If they need power or well, they want power isolated, well, great, now we're talking about selling them another meter. What are you doing for sump pump control? A great question because just about every facility has got some kind of major industrial sump. Now, if I ask those questions and they have no response and they're just blowing through this I, I, and they have really no interest in level displays, well, then great. I can move on to the next section. If there's some interest there, well, we have more information in the document on hazardous area displays showing level in a tank farm, how you power up the level transmitter using the precision digital unit, showing our dual scale feature for level control. If they say already have a way of seeing 872.2 inches, well, that might not mean much to them. Maybe rather than seeing it in inches, they'd really rather see it in percent, so they can see here 48%. Well, great, that's what the dual scale level, uh, the dual scale feature is for. And we've got most of page five devoted just to showing pump control, showing up to eight pump alternation. So if they do want to have some pump control, or well, we don't need our sumps worked on right now, but hey, we do have pumps out back doing some other application, great. You've got the information there to dive into that. But you just do a brief review page by page and see if they're interested. So for example, this is some of the information that you're going to find on page six. I would walk them through the photos. Here's a meter in an enclosure with a light and horn on the side of a tank. You've got the light and horn on the top of it so that you basically have one product that you order, and now you've got a complete level indicator solution. If you wanted to do multiple tanks on a single display, we've got a consolidator line so you can do 4 to 20 milliamps. And we've even got Modbus scanners if you wanted to use, say, multivariable level transmitters and pull all that data out digitally. At the bottom of the page, we've got an application photo showing you one of our Helios units on the outside of a shed next to a tank. If that gets their attention, they go, wow, okay, so that can go outside. Or they ask some kind of probing question. Well, great, then we can dive right into it. And the information there on the page explains to you that the Helios large display meters mounted high up on a building next to a tank, so it can be read from a distance. In this particular application, uh, they wanted to be able to see the information on the top of the shed, so you can imagine that in the real world there's a shed here, the garage door on the front of it, and then the rest of the tank is over here next to it. And then way across the parking lot on the edge of their building, they've got a small little door the edge of their big building, and thank you for forgiving my crude drawing. So they want to be able to stick their head out and see that Helios on the other side of the parking lot. The only problem with that plan is that, well, they don't want to have to walk over there. So to save themselves time, they put a big Helios on the top of the tank, uh, on the top of the shed. And now, even when they can't see this mechanical gauge over here, because the lighting's not right, because it's the wrong kind of time of day, there's too much glare covered in snow, whatever it happens to be, well, they can see that Helios from up to 100 feet away, either in direct sun or in the middle of the night. If you bring up that display and they have no reason for outdoor displays, well, you just move on. You don't get into the stories. Looking on into page 7, we've got some more level solutions. And again, you're going through them quick just to find an interest. What about level with submersible tra pressure transducers? Obviously, those of you folks out there who sell submersible level uh, submersible pressure transducers want to mention that. You've got level switch monitoring and enunciation. If all they have is basic point control. Great, we have enunciators for that. They can even power up the vibrating fork switches. You've got relays to run the light and horn as shown in the photos. If they have a lot of uh, nonlinear round horizontal tanks, we've got math functions in the unit to do the calculations for them so that you don't have to worry about strapping tables and such. So when you know, do you have round horizontal tanks here? And they'll say yes or no. If they say no, you move on. If they say yes, you talk about it. And lastly, we've got four different ways to display level. So if they've got displays out there already that are just showing 872 inches, well, who knows how many feet that is? Who knows what percentage of the tank that is? Well, hey, we'll tell you the inches. We'll tell you your volume. We'll tell you what with a bar graph, what percent full that is. And then we'll actually have a percent readout right on the top. 
Now, I want to stop here and talk about one specific question that actually I've already gotten from the audience and which comes up every webinar we do, which is the number one objection to starting to talk about these displays is that the transmitter already has a display on it. And all of the reasons listed here are reasons why they need a display anyway. There's the fact that we have a better display. It's more legible. You can read it from further away. It's backlit. We can show different kinds of units on them. So the simple fact that we are a better option for display is, of course, one reason. They may need something at eye level. If you're on a tank, you don't want to have to climb 70 feet up to go see the display on the top of the tank. You don't want to have to get down on the ground to read the display in a sump. You certainly don't want to be climbing around weirs and flumes to read the display on those level transmitters or straddling over pipes, jumping pipe to pipe to try to find what the display is on a flow meter. You want them located where your operators are going to see them. We can show things in alternate units, like feet and inches. If you have a flow meter, do they need totalization? We can do that. Also applicable for open channel flow. They may need relays not just because they want to do local control. They may be doing control in the control room. But many places who even do remote control want to have a local redundant control feature, uh, an absolute cutoff just to prevent overflows or having pumps run dry. And finally, if they're technically minded people, they probably like the idea of having signal isolation between the transmitter in the field and their control room equipment. And we can provide that isolation not only for the 420 loops, but for the power supplies. So what I'd like you to do is take a look through those answers, as some of you seem to be doing, uh, and check off the ones you're going to commit to offering when somebody says, well, my transmitter's already got a display. I don't, I don't need one of those. You know, I can look at it, and I see this little quarter-inch high display on the top front of my transmitter. Isn't that good enough? What's your response going to be? What's your go-to answer? And it looks like everybody there is uh, considered which one they like, and by the looks of it, uh, eye-level display seems to be your go-to, which is a great one, because I'm sure you know where these get installed. They're not in convenient locations. You know, when someone comes up with a truck to fill a tank, they're not climbing the tank to find out what's at the top. So be ready with that response, and keep these other ones in mind. And I apologize for that static there. I think my headset was getting a little staticky, so I just changed, changed over to the handset of my phone. Hopefully you can all still hear me okay. Once you're done with going over the level applications, you've got flow solutions. And again, you've got your questions right at the top of the page. Is your flow meter mounted in a place where it is hard to see? It's built in display. If the answer is yes, you've got a sail on your hands. If they like the idea of getting displays for their flow meters, we walk them through some areas that uh, we specialize in or that they may not think about us as being used in. So, for example, do they realize you can display rate and total at the same time? Do they ever have the need to convert a pulse, which is very hard to send long distances, to a 4 to 20 milliamp signal? You can do that with our PD6300. Also great, like our picture shows, for connecting you up to chart recorders or PLCs that take in 4 to 20 inputs. We're a great way to get the convenience of a display, the power supply that comes with it, and get that pulse converted into a 4 to 20 signal. We've got open channel flow that we can do, which works out really well considering we have so many units that can be seen from far away and be outdoors. And differential pressure calculations. If they're in a batch control, much like with pump control, we have a whole section that shows you how batch control for multiple uh, lines will work. So we can show you we have multi-stage batching capabilities and you can walk them through it if that's something that catches their eye. We then have a page on our wireless solutions where again you can just ask, is it too expensive or inconvenient for you to run conduit for your 4 to 20 signals? Now if that gets their attention, throughout the solutions guide you'll see application photos like the one that we have here. And what this is showing you is it's used in a water treatment plant. You've got two digesters. We're showing you one of them here on the left. And then we've got a picture of your transmitter connected up via wire to our PDW30 primary unit. And the PDW30 is, is our wireless system that's just point to point. It's not the 90, which we'll see in a moment. And it just connects up their digester 4 to 20 milliamp signal with the control room side 4 to 20 milliamp signal. 
And that way they don't have to dig up that driveway that you see there next to these tanks. Rather than bringing out the back hose, ripping up a line, sinking a conduit, and then having to repave things, they spent the thousand dollars on a PDW wireless system, and now they got their four to twenty milliamp signal going where they want it to wirelessly. If they want to get more into wireless, we offer some details on the PDW30, which is our point-to-point -point system. We've got one point in the field, sending it to one point at a control room or a, a shed location or a, wherever they want to bring all their signals together. And then you've got our PDW90 system, which comes with the base station, which you equip with various cards to provide whatever kind of outputs you're looking for. And it connects up wirelessly to a bunch of points in the field. And all those field points all come back to the PDW90. Of course, you can send signals both ways as well. So if you wanted to, say, uh, send an acknowledgment back out into the field or have 4 to 20 going in both directions, you can do that as well. But the basic application is 4 to 20 milliamps from your transmitters back to the control points. If you call in a lot of water and wastewater locations, right, this is probably your number one takeaway from this if you are a customer that deals with water plants. We have a page in here specifically for water and wastewater. These are examples you'll find in every single water and wastewater plant. You could even walk into the plant with this page open and simply put it down in front of them and they're going to recognize these applications. That would be a great way for you to use this if nothing else. So if you make calls on water plants, this page, page number 11 is for you. Show it to your water folks. In that page, we've got filter press upgrade or panels being upgraded. Uh, there's many filter presses out there with 18 panel meters in there, but like the one seen here, you can barely read them. It's not like somebody's sitting on a stool with this panel all day. Well, what good does it do showing that number if somebody can't glance at it from across the room and read it? So in this particular example, they're placing all of these small panel meters in their filter press panels with Trident X2s because you can see them from far away. And then you can get conversations going about digestive temperature measurement, showing digestive level on a display that they can see outdoors in the kinds of units they want to see it in. Once again, Trident X2 is being used in a pump speed panel because this panel is actually one story up, and they want to be able to see it from anywhere out on the floor that faces the panel. So they went with the Trident X2, and it's 1.2 inch display, so they can see it from up to 30 feet away. And a great outdoor option. Uh, even if explosion-proof approvals aren't needed, is our Protex line because it's got such a rugged housing. So a lot of people like it because it's so easy to install. It's extremely rugged. It's loop-powered, so it can go anywhere in the 4 to 20 milliamp line, and they can get a local convenient display, in this case doing flow rate and totalization. So use this page as a means to start a conversation about what kind of better-looking displays they like when you walk into water plants. I'm sure there are those of you out there who consider yourself water experts. That is the page for you. If you are an oil and gas solutions expert, well, we've got a couple pages for you as well. If you look on pages 12 and 13, you're going to see some examples of upstream, midstream, and downstream applications. Upstream, we've got an extracting example using our PD6830 flow rate totalizer connected right to the flow meter. For our midstream application, we've got some Div2 compressor panels showing our loop leader loop powered series. And then downstream, we've got a refining example of our PD8765, in this case being used to control pumps. On page 13, we've got some examples of just our general hazardous area equipment, talking a little bit about what kind of approvals we have for explosion proof needs and a few advantages those meters have, like loop or line powered options and the safe touch through glass buttons. And we've got examples of our intrinsically safe and non-incentive equipment for both panel and field mount. So if you do a lot with oil and gas, upstream, midstream, downstream, have pages 12 and 13 ready. Okay, That's your page to walk in there ready to show. If you just don't think you have the time to walk through this whole document, which once you get it down, take you about two, three minutes, then at least walk in there with that page open, ready to show it to them. And when they get interested, pull out your poster. As we get near the back of the document, we have some other applications we're showing, just again, as potential conversation starters. You go through them quickly with your customer. Do you ever do load cells?
for tank measurement, you have bins or bulk solids where you want to use load cells to measure the, the uh, level. Ever do a parent power calculation, high voltage or low, uh, high voltage or high current? Maybe you're doing pump monitoring. Uh, do you have any temperature applications that are worth discussing? Maybe they need PID controllers or our PD7000 temperature displays. And once again, we've got the idea of doing level with pressure transducers. It's a great way to get a uh, conveniently located display because you're certainly not going to have one out there otherwise uh, if you're using pressure transducers. Gas detection has been very good for the Helios, our large display unit. Here we've got it displaying outside ammonia levels. This is actually inside of a shelter. And this is also a really great example of why you want a display even though your transmitter has one. Because there is a display on that transmitter. Both of these have a display on them. It's just tiny and no one's going to notice it. And so when you're talking about a safety application, somebody has to notice something and know that they shouldn't be going outside into it. Well, sure, I'm, I'm sure there's all kinds of other things that you can count on, but I would not be counting on them seeing this little display. And if you want to make sure they know what's happening, I'd want to attach a nice big Helios display on there so that they can see what the readings are. And of course, the Helios comes with relays and power supplies, so you can send all that information off to enunciator panels, the control room, turn on horns, etc. But if you want to be able to see the numbers, you've got to put something else there that's actually legible. Same thing with these Trident X2s for chlorine leak detection. You've got to use a nice, big, bright, outdoor readable display. If you put something there people can't read, they won't read it. And if it's a safety application, that is a problem. With our new light and horns that can get attached to our NEMA 4X boxes, you've basically got a complete solution right here. You've got an 85 decimal horn, a red light that can strobe, your ProView process meter to give you a nice legible display, and we've got a reset button so they can manually silence it, uh, stop the horn, and you can have that set up as latching, non-latching, etc. So you can really do a lot of configuration with how that reset button works. So let's talk a little bit about selling Precision Digital with just the Solutions Guide. We certainly have demos you can get your hands on. You can bring your customers to our website. There's lots of ways you can choose to sell. But if you walk into a customer and all you have is the Solutions Guide, that is plenty for you to get Precision Digital sales out of that call. Use it to start the conversation with your customer. Once again, use the phrase on the cover, hey, my 4 to 20 million transmitters we just discussed, and some of the meters here will provide you your complete solution and then explain what that means. Leave it behind with your customer to remind them of your conversation. Hopefully you've flipped through this page by page, just quickly going through the titles, looking for the questions to ask, and you found a couple of things that they want to think about. You found a few opportunities. So leave it behind with them. Make sure your sticker is on it so that they can know who to contact. Hold up that actual size poster so they can really see the value in what you're offering. And when it works for you, and you've given out your 25, and you want more, contact us and let us know. I will be happy to send you more. I will provide you as many of these as you are willing to give out. So as we approach the end of the webinar, the real question is, are you serious about making money selling Precision Digital to your best transmitter customers? Do you want to put this solutions guide in front of the customers that you instantly think of when you think of, wow, those are my good transmitter customers, and they have not seen anything from me on Precision Digital? Do you want to put this solutions guide in front of them? You don't have to click yes here, but if you do, commit to yourself you're going to get it done. Ask for the solutions guides. Get them in front of the customers. And if you say no, hey, I'd love to reach out and find out why. My final note in the webinar uh, as far as, as explanation of how to use this guide is this. It will not be successful for you if you are not proactive with it. Your customer is never going to ask to see this. They are not going to call you up and say, hey, I, I really need some precision digital displays. Why don't you get in here? I think they look beautiful and I just want to put them on the shelf. <laughs> they are sold, paired up to your transmitters. They are your customer is aware of them because you bring them up 
when you're selling your transmitters. If you don't hand this out and you don't ask them an opening question like, uh, my 4 to 20 million transmitters and these meters provide the complete solution. Do you have a plan for how we're going to power that transmitter? Because these can help do it. If you don't get that conversation started, ask, do you want to stop climbing tanks to get level measurements? Ask, is your flow meter mounted in a place where it's hard to see its built-in display? If you don't do that, you will not get sales out of this. And this half hour has been wasted for you. If you want to make more money and you want to use Precision Digital to do that, if you want to get more sales out of your existing calls you're already making, you want to bring something new that's an accessory to the product you've already sold your best transmitter customers, great. This webinar can be a huge help. You just need to go up there and do it. And use this solutions guide as a tool to get it done. Hold up the poster. Leave it behind. We'll be happy to provide you more. If you really like what you've seen here, and you'd like us to come out there and show you how this is done, Go out there to some of your best transmitter customers, your best water and waste customers, and show you what the Solutions Guide can do for you. I am happy to do that. In fact, if you sign up with one of our outside distributor team, I'm going to make sure they bring along five of our PD9502 signal generators and hand it out to your customers while they're on the sales call. And unfortunately, for some reason, my email is not showing up on that last line. But it should be saying, Sign up by emailing me at jryan at predig.com. And let's make a plan. Let's see when uh, you're available, where you want to go. And we'll make a plan to get them out there to help you get this done, to help train you in how to use this guide, and to win you some friends along the way with our 9502 signal generator. And I'll have my email back up at the end of the presentation, so if you don't see it here, that's fine. If you didn't get it when I said it, we'll show you in a moment. Here's another example of Owen recently out on some calls. I think some of you in the audience here might actually recognize this photo. And what's nice about bringing us out on these calls is we know what our role is on the call. We bring the demo units to show your best transmitter customers. You can see here that on this one visit, Owen had brought with him our wireless units, our point enunciators for use with flow or level switches, the ProView, our flagship panel meter. And in addition to helping you learn how to use the Solutions Guide and how to pitch these products, uh, we also give you the time you need to make the rest of your sales call happen. Please feel free to bring us out on a call you're going to talk about your transmitters on. We'll let you do your part, and then we'll come in at the end and help you learn how to spin that into a precision digital discussion at the end of the call. So you lead. We provide the support you need to learn how to add precision digital into your sales pitch. So if that looks good, and you're thinking to yourself, this all looks really great. I didn't know Precision Digital could do all of these things. I wish I knew more about the product. I wish I knew more about how to sell it. Let me know here now, and we'll get in touch with you, and we'll plan a time to come into the office and show you the products, talk about how to sell it, go through some applications in depth. We can even wire up some products to your transmitters. And with that, we have reached the end of today's webinar. I hope you found it useful. Once again, I would remind you that, that the most important real takeaway here is you've got a great tool in front of you that requires you to spend a few minutes with it, read the lines off the cover, ask a few probing questions. If you are proactive with this, it will get you additional sales. And if you'd like some, some uh, experience working with our team on how to do that, we're happy to come out and work with you. Of course, we've also got our PD902 signal generator giveaway. So if you'd like to get started immediately, let us know. Give us your home address. We'll be happy to sign you up for 25 catalogs and get you this PD9502. I'm going to go back to my intro slide now just to make sure that everybody has my contact information. If you'd like to send me your request or get in touch with me about any questions you may have. And I'll thank you for attending today's webinar. We do have a couple of questions we'll cover real quick. I know I've already kept you online here for 40 minutes, so I'll make them brief. Uh, we had one question from Don asking, I notice in the temperature sections you don't have pictures of the Nova line. Are they still available? I like some PID controllers. And yes, Don, you absolutely can still get PID controllers from Precision Digital. The Nova line is still available. But this is a solutions guide. This is a, a guide designed to talk about applications. And so 
Uh, of course, not every single product is represented in here with its own write-up. It's not a product catalog. But you will notice if your customer is interested in any specific solution, at the end of that section we have a, listed, uh, a list of product numbers that you can reference to start looking at what solutions you may actually want as far as a purchase goes. Uh, and the, the Novas are certainly available and mentioned there. Uh, so just because you may not see a product you're familiar with, you, know, you may not notice, oh, I don't see a picture of the um, PD6060 dual input meter. Well, it doesn't mean it's not available. It just means it wasn't the ones we chose for the pictures in these particular applications. I also have a question uh, from David coming in right now about the wireless units uh, and asking if they are Class 1 Div 1 and Class 2 Div 1. Well, I can understand why you would ask because they look like in that blue enclosure that they are. And while I suspect they will be in the future, uh, right now we do not have approvals on those. So uh, those are just safe area only wireless solutions, at least for now. And Steve has asked, are the standard Flume and Weir tables in the firmware? Uh, in a sense, they are. What you do is to use the uh, weirs and flumes for open channel flow with our products, you enter in the exponent component of your weir and flume calculation. So if you, if you look up that weir and flume, you're going to have an equation used there. There's going to be an exponential component. You enter in that exponent number, and then you just scale it normally, and then we do the math to get you that table. So you're not selecting a specific weir and flume, you're not entering in the table. You're just giving us the exponential component of that, and then we're going to recognize, okay, we know what's happening here. This is an open channel flow application for weirs and flumes. There's some math that has to go on in the background, and so you, you just give it a general scale for the level. You give it the exponent, and you're going to get your flow. Well, once again, thank you folks for attending. I hope it has been useful. I hope we hear from you soon. And I'll just remind you that there is a survey at the end of the webinar. If you could fill that out, it shouldn't take you more than a minute. We'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much, and all of you have a good weekend. Bye.